going on guys welcome back to tactical talks so in this video it's going to be fairly brief but i want to talk to you guys about something that i really haven't seen a video about something that i utilize on a daily basis when i'm working and i got the idea from a buddy of mine and i just thought it was a really cool idea so i'm going to show you guys who are law enforcement who are thinking about going into law enforcement how to carry a backup gun in your vehicle and if you're not law enforcement kind of some ideas of what you could do in your vehicle um, how you can do it and why it's a good idea so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to be talking about my backup pistol this is my glock 27 now there are rounds in the magazine but the gun is clear so we're just going to be adults about it we're not going to rack that back this is my glock 27 like i said if you guys want to check this out i've done multiple videos on this gun i'll leave them linked but this is a glock 27 fully customized and i carry this as a backup pistol now for those of you who don't know why I carry a Glock 22 on duty, so what I do is I carry a Glock 27 in here, so when I reach over for Glock 22 mags, they fit in the Glock 27 with no issues. So that's why I carry the Glock 27, but what I'm going to be talking about is when I'm in my patrol vehicle like I am right now, for those of you who've never worn a duty belt or never tried to utilize your pistol while in your vehicle, I can tell you right now, it's very difficult to do. There's so many things, especially with my vest. I have so many things sitting up top and my gun sits nice and low down here. So if I'm in my car and I need to get to my pistol really quick, it's kind of a hard thing to do. I have to try to get in here, rotate my body. If I was driving or if I was sitting, leaning this way, typing reports like I normally do, it would cause an issue of me having to lean back, try to get up in here, pull the gun out. It just becomes a bigger, bigger hazard than what it needs to be. Unfortunately, if you guys have watched the news in the last few years, there's been multiple attacks on police officers while they're sitting in their vehicles, whether they're typing reports, whether they're, you know, staking out an area, whatever they're doing, people notice, you know, officers just sitting in a vehicle. And unfortunately, it's fairly easy for them to kind of sneak up on them, especially if you're in a really big area, very busy city. They sneak up on them, and at that point, they engage them. Well, the part, that gives us a disadvantage as far as being police officers is you're in a vehicle. There's really nowhere to go. So at this point, your fight or flight kicks in your fight. As I said, you have to try to get to that gun to pull that gun out to try to engage. Well, unfortunately you're very limited as far as cover goes. So your flight wants to kick in. Most times your vehicle is already on, but having to put your foot on the brake, get the vehicle in gear, finally get somewhere to go. For those of you who go out and shoot at the gun range, know it, it takes milliseconds to get rounds off, you know, and somebody can empty out a full magazine in the time that it takes for somebody to put a vehicle in drive and start driving. So I want to give you guys a second option. Now, I know I'm kind of talking a lot. I'm trying to give you guys the reason why I do what I do, but I saw a buddy of mine a few years ago. Well, I guess it's been more than that. When I first started as a police officer five years ago and we have these seat caddies. A lot of us carry seat caddies. A lot of us carry bags, just different things to organize our equipment while we're at work. And I noticed a buddy of mine had a holster just like this or similar to this on a seat caddy mounted up to it. And when I looked at it, I was like, that's upside down. Well, it didn't make sense to me at first until I did it. And I put a pistol in here and this one's just a generic Kydex one that I got online. Very cheap because I needed it fairly quick. And I put it in here and I carry a pistol just like that upside down in my vehicle. The reason for that is if I'm trying to get something that's sitting upright from the driver's side, I would have to tuck my arm in tight, turn this way, and then try to get to a gun and pull it. If I'm here, as I'm driving, whether I have two hands on the wheel, whether I'm manipulating my computer, manipulating my radio, whatever I have going on, I can just go straight over the top and I got my hand on my gun. There's been multiple times where at nighttime somebody will approach my vehicle and I don't know what their intentions are. So instead of just drawing a gun and putting a gun on somebody, I can sit here and do this. I can quietly just pull away and I can sit here with the gun in my hand. Now, I've had people come up to me and talk to me and I'm holding a gun the entire time and they don't even realize it. We can carry on the conversation. I can answer whatever questions need to be answered. They go along their way. It's done. I felt safe. They never knew, you know, anything different. I was never engaging them with any kind of weapon, but it's just that added security. So like I said, 
Very simple, very easy to do. This is just a very generic Kydex holster. I needed a newer one. I had one for my buddy over at Contra Valley Custom Kydex, but I needed a newer one just because I added the uh, TLR6 to the pistol a while back. So I bought this one online so that I could have it a little bit quicker. Um, it's, it's a decent holster. There's nothing wrong with it. But like I said, it's just a generic one. You can go online and buy anything as far as whatever pistol you decide you want to carry as a backup. As far as mounting it, I just drilled one hole on each side on the bottom and the top of the belt clips and then drilled holes in the little pocket right here and then put a couple screws in there and it was good. It's not going anywhere. It's not doing anything. I mean, that thing is sturdy because it's Kydex and because it's tight form fitting around my pistol, the gun doesn't slide out, doesn't fall out when I'm driving, when I'm hitting bumps. It's very secure in its position. Um, I did a video a while back. And it was, how many guns do police officers carry and why? This is one of those guns that I talked about. This is the backup that I carry. This is how I carry it. And obviously, I've explained to you guys why I carry it. It's an added security when I'm in my vehicle. It's a lot easier to get to than having to fumble around with your duty belt while in your vehicle. Those of you who are not police officers or not wanting to be police officers, but you're kind of looking for a better way to carry a pistol in your vehicle, um, that's the next part I want to get to and I want to talk about with you. But... The first thing that I want to instill with you guys is ensure that you look up whatever your state laws are, um, whatever your regulations are, whatever, you know, whether that's local, state, federal, look up everything that you have to look up before you carry on with anything that I'm going to recommend as far as an easier way to carry a pistol with you. Um, I know for me, I usually appendix carry. A lot of guys carry the gun behind their back, and then there are some guys that will three o'clock carry, and then of course, six o'clock if you're left-handed. Now, if you're left-handed, I feel like you have a lot better options if you're driving. It's not as hard to get to the pistol. Now, I really don't know that because I'm not left-handed. I've never actually had to utilize that. But I know as far as me appendix carrying, if I'm driving or if I'm in my vehicle and I need to get to that gun, for me, since I'm a little bit bigger guy, I have to lean back, reach in, grab that gun, pull it out, and then go from there. Same thing if you have the gun behind your back. You would have to lean forward, reach back, pull the gun out, and then try to engage at that point. Now, for... The three o'clock guys, it may be a little bit easier, but again, depending on your size, depending on what you're wearing, there's a lot of different variables that come in that may interrupt, you know, your, your draw in order to engage. So keep that in mind as well. The next thing I'm going to talk about is a panel. It's, it's like a Molly panel. And a lot of you guys may have already seen this, but I know that gray man tactical carries them. I'm not going to leave that linked. Um, unfortunately, YouTube does not like me leak, uh, linking anything gun related. But go look up Gray Man Tactical, look up um, plastic or Kydex Molly panels, and you guys will find what I'm um, talking about. What you can do with that is they come with straps where you can strap it around your headrest. It goes behind the seat, and then it straps in the bottom of the seat to where it keeps that Molly panel behind your seat. Well, at that point, you just get a holster similar to this one and mount it upright on the back part of your seat. Now, in my patrol vehicle, obviously, I'm not going to necessarily have the luxury of showing you exactly how that would work. But if you are driving and you needed to get to your pistol, all you would have to do is reach behind your seat, grab that gun, draw from there. And then at that point, you can engage without having to lean forward to, to reach behind you, lean back to reach in front of you. It kind of keeps it out of the way. Now, like I stated before, ensure that you guys look up whatever your state laws are, whatever local regulations are. The other thing is, if you have children traveling in the back, obviously not a good option. You don't want that gun just sitting there in front of them. Um, and I know a lot of people might say, well, I can leave it unloaded, stuff like that. Well, that kind of defeats the purpose, in my personal opinion. The whole point of this is that quick draw. Get over to the gun, grab it, pull it out, and we're ready to go. If you have it unloaded, at that point, whatever unloaded means to you, whether you have to throw in a magazine after you draw that, or you have to draw the gun and then rack the slide, you're adding steps, ultimately adding time to a possible critical situation. Now, I know that a lot of people, I would say 99.9% .9 of people will probably not need their pistol in their vehicle unless you're law enforcement or unless you're doing something that you really shouldn't be doing and you have people after you. But again, it's an option. So many times you hear about stuff on the news where, you know, there was a critical incident and there was all these bystanders. There's so much crime that happens during the day. I feel like a law-abiding citizen with a pistol can prevent a lot of these things. Now, am I saying that everyone should be trigger-happy and everyone should just go around shooting everyone that they deem to be a bad guy? 
Definitely not. But again, it's nice to have that option if you feel you get to a point in your life where your life or anybody who's with you, if their life is in danger, I guarantee you, and again, my personal opinion, I'm going to do anything and everything necessary to ensure that me and my family go home at the end of the day. So kind of this is a, the number one. The first one as far as where my gun is in my vehicle and why I carry it there. Hopefully it gives you guys a little bit more options. Again, more tools for your toolbox. Those of you that, that are police officers, if you don't have something set up like this, I cannot recommend this enough. I used to have a spare pistol that just kind of sat in a bag. I even did, you know, sitting in the door and I had all these different places where I would keep a gun and it was nice to know that I had the extra gun, but I couldn't necessarily get to it as quick as I needed. And especially in a situation where I'm in my vehicle and people roll up on me or if that was, you know, to happen, I was not going to be able to get to that gun quick enough. At that point, I might as well just fumble around in my holster. So again, I hope, hope this video encourages you guys to do something a little bit different. Think outside the box. It, it's a dangerous place that we're living in, especially if you're law enforcement and you're sitting in your vehicle. This is not a safe place to be. And we are in this 90% of the day. So keep that in mind. Hopefully this helps you. For those of you who are not law enforcement, and you can do this. Hopefully this gave you an option as far as being able to draw a pistol in your uh, vehicle. I know a lot of you guys like to keep it wedged between your seat. The only thing with that is if you live like where I live in Texas and we're out on a country road and a dirt road and you're sitting there hitting bumps, the likelihood of that gun sliding down between the seats or falling out is pretty high. So you want to have more options and something a little bit more secure to be able to get to if you ever need it. So again, Thank you guys for watching this video. Go check out Concho Valley Custom Kydex if you want a holster in order to add to your seat caddy or behind your seat. Again, that, the company that I was talking about was Gray Man Tactical. I know there's a bunch of other companies out there. I haven't really used them. I just know about them, so I can't sit here and recommend a lot of them. But go and check them out. Make up your own mind. And let me know what you guys think of this. And I'll see you on the next one.